In this recording, we are going to work a practice problem very similar to what we'll have set up in the lab this week. We're using a technique known as the Dumas bulb method for determining the molar mass of unknown volatile liquid. The word volatile simply means that it evaporates from liquid to gas readily at a reasonable temperature under 100 degrees Celsius. In this picture, you can see that one method for the Dumas bulb method here is to take a hot plate and in the hot plate you place some volatile liquid and you begin heating it and over time all of this liquid would then turn to a gas and you could measure its volume. Ours would also look like this. So we're going to have a setup similar to a hot plate on this side where we take a Erlenmeyer flask, not necessarily a bulb, but an actual Erlenmeyer flask and we're going to create kind of a little cap on it with a piece of aluminum foil and we'll put a little hole with a um, the paper clip just so that the excess gas has a way of escaping. And you'll boil this in um, a hot water bath until all of that liquid has evaporated. You'll just visually be uh, set when you don't see any liquid further down here. And then what's not shown but sitting over here is a cold water bath and with a, a rubber gripper buddy or a, some sort of a um, a clamp, you'll take this flask out once it's evaporated and you'll plunge it into cold water and then what will happen is all of the gas will recondense to form a liquid and that liquid then can be masked in terms of uh, gathering data. So boil it and cool it to determine how much of the volatile liquid then recondenses to fill that entire volume of the flask. And let's suppose we just work a practice problem with the following data. So our job is to calculate molar mass of this unknown liquid by turning it into a gas and then recondensing it. The mass of the unknown vapor, so what we'll end up doing is weighing an empty flask and weighing it again at the end of the experiment uh, to determine how much weight was gained by the condensation of the gas, 1.012 grams according to this data set. The volume of the bulb, in this set, the volume of this bulb here, or for us it would be the entire volume of the Erlenmeyer flask, let's say that's 354 cubic centimeters, and I know a, a milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter. And I also understand that when I ever do a Pouvenert problem, the ideal gas law, we always, always have to be sure that we convert that into a liter unit. So I'm going to slide the decimals three spots to make sure that I remember it goes in as 0.354 liters as the volume of our flask. The pressure that day, and again you'll just probably use your weather app on your phone to determine uh, atmospheric pressure. Let's say it's 742 torr, which we understand is also the same thing as saying a millimeter of mercury. And therefore we know the R, the ideal gas constant, to match the TOR unit is 62.4 and that is in millimeter mercury times liter over Kelvin mole would be its unit. The temperature looks like as we're recording is 90 degrees. Notice that your thermometer will actually be out here in the hot water bath and that we'll assume the hot water is the same temperature as the gas inside. So if it's 90 degrees Celsius, we'll convert that to Kelvin and we'll do so by adding the 273 and we get a temperature of 363 Kelvin units. We'd like to know the unknown molar mass. I know the ideal gas equation sets PV equal to NRT Inside N is our target variable for molar mass. We know that N is equal to moles. And just remember that round little buddy trick where we have grams over molar mass is our mole. We're looking for this variable ultimately, the molar mass of our unknown. We'll do so by solving for N, the number of moles. And once we know moles, we can pull out molar mass. So just rearranging here, we know that P times V set over R times T isolates the N variable, the number of moles. Let's go ahead and work this problem just by subbing in those values. The first variable, pressure, was given to us as 742 
and that's a millimeter mercury. Let me just give myself some room. MMHGs. And the volume we converted to a liter as 0.354 liters. Set over the product of the R constant, 62.4, and the Kelvin temperature of 363. Let's solve first for N, the number of moles. Hit with me to be sure I get a common answer with you. 742 times 0.354 divided by parentheses, product of 62.4 times 363 Kelvin units, close parentheses, and the number of moles I found was 01159. Let's just round that up to be 0 0.0116 moles. Now remember, molar mass is found by taking the number of grams and dividing by moles. From the story problem, 1.012 grams divided by that mole number we just calculated from solving our ideal gas equation. So let me hit that with you, 1.012 divided by that previous answer and the molar mass I'm finding is 87.27, and my unit there is a gram per mole. We solve for N, the ideal gas equation. N stands for the number of moles. We then substitute, remember that round little buddy? I erased it, maybe I should put it back. Grams over molar mass is a mole. If this is our target, you can see our equation then says grams divided by mole pulls out molar mass, and that's exactly what we've done here. Let's try one more example problem together. Example four, and that will finish your packet. The molar mass of a volatile substance was determined by the Dumas bulb method described above. The unknown vapor had a mass equal to 0.846 grams. The volume of the bulb was 354 cubic centimeters. Remember that's the same thing as a milliliter, and when we use the ideal gas equation, we must put that in as a liter so that the R constant matches. The pressure of the system that day, again, just reading the barometer, 752 torr units. That also tells me the R, the ideal gas constant, will match that pressure unit as 62.4, and that's Tor liters over Kelvin mole. And the temperature it's telling us is 100 degrees Celsius. When we use the ideal gas equation, we'll put that in as in Kelvin units, 373 Kelvin units. Let's find the molar mass of that unknown. I know that our target, when we set up our ideal gas equation, is N, the number of moles, because hidden in there, we know gram per mole is molar mass. So what we need to solve for first is N. The number of moles, just rearranging, is PV over RT. Here we had the pressure given to us as 752 torr. The volume in a liter unit, 0.354 liters. Set over our Kelvin temperature and our gas constant. We'll put 62.4 and 373 Kelvin. Remember, this is the product, so make sure we hit that inside a parenthesis. Let's solve for N, the number of moles. 752 times 0.354 divided by the product, so inside a parenthesis, 62.4 times 373, close parenthesis. I found N, the number of moles, to be 0, 01144. And now to find our molar mass, we simply take the grams which I forgot, 0.846. And we'll divide that by that previous answer. And let's see what we find. 0.846 divided by previous answer, and I get 73.97.
about 74 grams per mole. And this is exactly what you'll end up doing in the lab this week. You will get the following measurements. You'll use a scale to measure the mass of a volatile liquid that recondenses after you vaporize. You'll find the volume of the Erlenmeyer flask by seeing how much water it actually holds. The pressure most likely will be written on the board. We'll have to get that from the weather app for the day as barometric pressure changes with weather systems. The R you'll use matches the pressure. The pressure, if we're reading a barometer, will come to us in millimeter mercury, which is also known as TOR. And remember, your thermometer measures in Celsius, but convert it to Kelvin before proceeding with any of the calculations. Be sure to bring this completed note pack with you to your lab day.